Hi guys, welcome back. Welcome um, everybody. <laughs> oh, you've got a few thank yous there. Oh, you? yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yep, yeah, uh, for the buy me a coffees. Thank you, Wayne Hardy. And I don't know if I'm saying it right, but Paul Camrad bought five coffees. So thank you're going you to be much. you're going to be well stimulated. <laughs> very appreciated. Thank you. Right. Um this is just a little follow up because I've done the one the last video that went up was about the spindle turning. And I did say about with, with bevels and, and stuff, and I've had some come back and said, but can I actually explain a bit better about the bevel, what the bevel does? They wanna know what is the bevel? When I say ride the bevel, what do I actually mean? Um, so, right, okay, yeah, yeah, guys, I'm not one that wants to stand around talking a lot, but yeah. <laughs> give it my best shot, I'll give it my best shot. Um, right, so, the bevel. Personally, I say the bevel, Oh, it's one thing, it's a depth stop. That's all it is, it controls how much wood you will take off, okay? Without a bevel, you just dive in. With a bevel, you can control it, okay? Which is where I, I always say this this thing about uh, anchor, bevel, cut, A, B, C. It's I don't know where the hell that all come from. It's from donkey's years back, and people that are starting turning now are quoting it, as if it's something new, it's not, it's years old and it's so out of date, it just, it just crap, it's rubbish. <laughs> okay, the thing is, right, okay. And first off, this is not an anchor, I've told you before, it's a tool rest, we rest our tool on it, we do not anchor our tool. You anchor a boat, look at the definition of anchor. Anchor is to fix, make something so it can't move. This has to move. So, if we put our bevel on here, right, there, we've got a bevel on. Now I have a very steep bevel on mine for a particular reason, and I'll, I'll tell you about that. Right, our bevel's on, no cutting, okay? So, that would be our, what they'd say, anchor, say rest, bevel, okay. Raise the handle and cut. But what have we done? We've taken that bevel off. The, the minute we raise that handle, We've not got no bevel control. So now is when people do this and they get their catches. This is when you'll get catches with a roughing gouge. The roughing gouge is probably one of the most easiest and loveliest tool to use, and people will get nasty catches because they come on, they anchor their tool, they put the bevel on, and they raise the handle. And there you go, unsupported cut, okay? You've got to stop that from going in so you have got to to i'm not going to put my face shield now i don't like to turn my face shield on but i'm only going to do a very i'll move my bloody coffee yeah. <laughs> i might have a lot of them to drink but <laughs> right i want to show you what i'm talking about right so we're on here and this is what oh right, <laughs> right i'm gonna look got my bevel okay now i come off and now I have to control how much this tool, because this tool will just want to go in and in and in and in. There's nothing to control it, okay? And as you can see here, if I do this with straight in, I want to try and catch some of that in, inside the chisel. Right, okay. We get a lot of dust, we get all this short stuff here, and we get these sort of curly, twisted up, crushed up shavings, okay? Right, if we come on with our bevel, and this is why I chop, you, you have to sharpen your chisels right, okay, to make it all work. I put, I have this on my, I don't want my roughing gouge to do corners like come in and put a nice square edges on, okay? I don't need it for that. If I'm gonna do that, I have this tool, okay? And I just come in, bevel on, raise the handle, and push forward but when i raise the handle i push forward there my bevel is still in full contact the moment i raise the handle it's sure. totally different There's, and it's only the distance it's the distance of a hair to make the difference from whether that's bevel controlled or not if you haven't got a bevel you're just scraping if you're scraping you've got no no depth control okay if the chisel sharpened with a nice curve, and I've got a, that's a 30 degree, 60 or 30, whichever way you want to call it, okay? 
it's hard for me because being on a car, if I go over to a chop saw and I say I want that at a 30 degree cut, they'd come back with it there. If I said 60 degree, it'd be and it'd be a 60 degree cut there. Mm. You sharpen that and put it, put a tractor on it and measure it, it says 30, so there you go. <laughs> Just to confuse us. Right, so anyway, right, I've got my bevel on, okay? No cutting. I rotate my tool and now I'm cutting, but my bevel, my bevel is in full contact and I get these lovely fluffy shavings, okay? So there, my bevel, I just rotate, I've still got my bevel. This, no matter how hard I push, it won't go in any further than what I this cutting edge will allow. The bevel controls it. So I can go like that and catch these. Now look at the shavings again, okay? And you'll get these shavings because of one thing with bevel supported. So if anything, what you'll be is anchor, bevel, cut, bevel. <laughs> so you got to go back onto the bevel. Yeah. And I tell you that bit, did I? No, let me the no. extra bevel. <laughs> so what, the minute you come off that bevel, that's scraping. That's just a scrape. And as you look, we get, it's just little, I can't even got, they're all little squares go flying off, mm -hmm. okay? If we got bevel contact, rotate it, get a cutting edge, and then we come along, now we get, and this is not wet wood, this is dry beach, okay? Kiln dried beach, and we get shavings like that, yeah. okay? So that's where the bevel comes in. If we're talking on a spindle gouge, like I said. Now again, if you do this bevel rub and try to pick up a cut, you come off the bevel, okay? So if you're here and you go like, you come off, there's no bevel contact. That's when you'll tend to get that. Skips, okay? Diggings, catches, all that sort of stuff comes, okay? I'm gonna just clear that. Away, that's it. Right, if we put our bevel on, and we give a little rotate, and we, look, the handle just comes around like that. We've put a little shelf, okay? Now, our bevel still hasn't left the wood, and we can now, we have a depth control. The bevel is on the wood, okay? This is the cutting edge. It can only go where our bevel allows us to go. So we have beautiful finish and full control. There is no, effort there's no bouncing there's no nothing we're not having to hold the tool back we don't have to worry about where the tool's going i'm going to shallow it up now all i have to do to shallow that cut up is let the handle drift in slightly brings the bevel the cutting edge off and there we go and we get that cut okay now if i go the other way and I say, I want to start on the end here. Now people say, you've got no bevel, right. All we need to do is that, that's it. We've got a place for our bevel to go. Look, it sits there. And we can push along, okay? The bevel is controlling it. Now, get past that little rough bit. If I am bevel control, and I pull my handle away, I'll go in. Now, if I don't get my bevel back in control, I will just keep going deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper until I go through it, okay? But now, if I want to come along, I've got my bevel on, I'm at one, one cut, okay? So we're coming along, right, I want to go in, I want to come back out. I want to go back in, and come back out, and go back in. All controlled by the bevel. My bevel is controlling the depth. I can't go in any further. It can't shoot in on me. Look. It can't go in. I'm getting a very deep cut, so I'm going to come out a bit. Right, now I'm going in. There we go. So we can, we can sort of, in and out and in and out and move it all about, okay? 
with a beautiful finish as long as we keep the bevel in contact. We must have bevel control. The bevel stops it. Once that bevel comes off and we go tip, we've got no control over how deep it's gonna go. It will go in, okay? And if you put your bevel on and you come onto the tip to start a cut, it will, it will wanna skate. If you've got a slight uphill, it will wanna go uphill, okay? It, it's just, look, that's what happens. That's all that's happening is that, okay? And if you turn it that way, it goes that way, okay? And all that is, is it's, it's tracking. It's to say, if you've got skis, you'll know if you go skiing, to turn, you just think your side is, so it just goes in and it will turn and it will turn. It's exactly the same with, with this. It will go whichever way, okay? And your bevel can control and keep you on one edge. If you go nose down, you'll go deeper, nose up, you'll go shallower. Same with a plane. You know, you put your wing flaps down and you'll go up, you put your wing flaps up and you'll go down, no, up, whichever way. You know, yeah, I, don't, I don't fly plane, they won't let me fly a plane, I don't know why. Why? Anyway, there you go. Yeah. I don't because I keep going up when I go down. Yeah. <laughs> but you know the thing, guys. You know, it's it's a way of controlling. A bevel is that it controls how deep. Without that, we just we go straight. Diving. We've got no control. Yeah. And that's why scrapers can be particularly and even a carbide is exactly the same. Now the carbides, if we use them as a scraper this way, okay. The only thing controls how far that goes in is us. We push it in or we pull it out. And that's why we get grabs. And if you get it sight and you go that this way, it, it wants to go in. If you get can get on the bevel and come there, no cutting, then you can just rotate it and pick up a cut and you're fine. And it works exactly the same. If we come here and we've got a bevel there, no cutting, rotate it cutting and once we've got that bevel in control again that will determine how far that goes in once we've got this little ledge here and it doesn't matter how deep that ledge is as deep as it goes once that bevel's on there that's what it wants to take off everything in front of that ledge will disappear but nothing more okay you might come off a bit and take less, but nothing more. When it's unsupported, okay, and we try to come along, it could go deeper, it can go shallow, nothing can, nothing is changing how far. You push in and you pull back out. You control it, okay? And the trouble with that, us controlling it, is there's human error comes in. So that's it, guys, that is, the bevel okay exactly the same if we go with a, a skew chisel we've got the same thing we've got the bevel let me just clean that off i'll get a smooth a smooth finish uh, right yep yeah, my hand there right there be all right okay same with our skew chisel we'll say Always bring your tallest up. Yes, yeah, so right. Put the bevel on, rub the bevel, then pick up the cut. Right, well the thing is, you've got to be careful because you'll end up coming off of the bevel, onto the edge, and then you'll get a skip, okay? Far better if you can get the cut and then get the bevel on. Then you've got a control. Okay, so come in with the cut, start the cut. So we just bring our chisel up, and all it is again is, is this little look there. And then once we've started the cut, because that determines that depth. Now, if that bevel is on there, that's the depth we will cut it, and we take all that off. Now you all hear it said that if you're gonna come on, you come from the middle and go out, and you'll go from the middle and go this way, okay? 
And then what you've got to try and do is match up the cuts. And that's why when you're new to turning, you'll always end up with this little hollow. Because they say you can't, you can't come on from an end because you've got nothing to put the bevel on. Not unless you, when you make it. So if you come on and you get that little cut, there it is, I've started it. Now my bevel's on. Now I can come through, bevel controlled and do one cut. And keep it, and it works the same that way. Look, if I just start the cut, that's it. As soon as I start, all I need is literally a sixteenth of an inch is enough, a, a millimeter. It's enough to get my bevel on. My bevel's on there. Now I've got full bevel control. Now I can rotate to get a bit more cutting edge. And I can come along. And this, the skew is one of the few chisels I'll, I'll actually hold this way. Because I, I, what you've got to watch, some, some cuts you do, you will come further up. And when you're here, your finger's not always got that amount of strength to stop it wanting to go over and you don't want it to go over in that point to catch so if you're doing these curves you'll tend to come in and when you come in you're cutting higher up on the blade to do it so we are coming here and as we come in we tend to be a bit higher we're not on that bottom part to, to get around the curve and that's when you come up there and it can have a tendency to want to grab you over so I don't like to do it like that I like to hold there and I can but don't death grip it you know it's not going to go anywhere but all you need to be able to come on on an end is a place to put your bevel that's it there that is that big okay that's all it is but that is enough for me to get that bevel on it's on okay and then I can come into the cup bevels on and now my bevel stays in contact all the way if I put my bevel on, and then I've got to pick up a cut, I've got to take my bevel off. My bevel's got to come off the wood, and then if you don't put it back on, you'll do this, and look, if you ever get that, if you ever get that sort of thing happen to you, that will be a simple case of it's unsupported and the edge just wants to go in. It's far better to try and just Gently, just practice it. Come in, just gently make a little, a little place for your bevel. That's it. Now my bevel's on. Now I can't get no run backs, can't get no catching. I can change the speed by angling my skew, whichever way I want to angle it. And I can get that sort of nice clean finish. If I want to do like a cove, I just come in and I just, again, I can't, but I've got full bevel full bevel control you just cut a little bit higher up on the blade as you come round but again I can't rub my bevel in there and then pick up a cut it just doesn't work you can't do it you have to come in with the tip like there the, the bottom part so we come in now the bevels in contact and we can go round okay so once you get that bevel in there as soon as you make that little cut that tiniest little shelf so if I go this way that tiny little shelf that's it there that's my bevel now in contact and I can come round okay it, that's all it needs is that tiny little little cut and that gets your bevel in then you've got bevel control the bevel controls how deep that chisel will go, okay? Otherwise it's a unsupported cut and it wants to dive in. And that's when you get problems with your catches and the skips and things. And it's the same on a bowl. When you come around a bowl, you just have to look at your, your chisel. Right, okay, there we go. You just look at that chisel and you've got to look at the bowl, okay? Now you think to yourself, right, that, can go straight down the side and I can maintain all the way down but as I come around to the bottom how am I gonna that's not gonna maintain it is it so it's got to come off and it's gonna go in 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 or I'm gonna lose a cut so you'll come down you'll go like that and you lose the cut and you push forward or 
you come down, you come round and you feel it going in. That's because the bevel's no longer in contact. That is unsupported and just an unsupported cutting edge wants to go that way. So you'll get those lines. You just have to change about, look at what you're doing. If you can drop your handle, then it's a case of you can open your flute, drop your handle, and then that shape fits in to a curved shape. And literally, a, a hollow in a bowl is no different to a, a curve on here. And you have to come round that way. But you need to drop the handle because if you open your flute and you've got it this way and your bevel's not touching, again, bang. And that's your bowl's going off. Because it's unsupported, it goes one way in. Okay, and but you will try and hold it back and you'll get those and you'll be grim oh, like that, trying not to let it dive in. Far better if you can loosen everything up, come around to there, drop the handle, open the flute, and follow around like how that follows around. So that's that controls then how much cut there is. That's a bevel, guys. It's a depth stop. That's all it is. But it should be um rcb actually rest cut bevel never anchor at all and never go bevel then cut because to cut you've got to come off the bevel then it's an unsupported cut if you can go cut and get the bevel in then you'll support the bevel supporting the cut so there you go mm -hmm. hope that helps and if it you know don't help then carry on doing what you're doing <laughs> it's up to you but there you go, just try to explain it for you. And I hope that helped. Give me a little email and let me know if that's actually explained it for you. Yeah. Okay. Like I said, I'm not good at standing and talking. You know, I'm not very much of a talker. So, anyway, <laughs> next one, guys, because the next question I'm going to do on another video, mm -hmm, which is um, I keep getting asked what one tool. I've just done the Type 3 set, which is what I recommend. New turners, you want to get into carbide, Type 3 set gives you everything you need to turn it we've done a little series of that but i do get asked what one tool they just want to try one tool so i'll go into what one tool we will use and that'll be on the next video toodle pip guys and i'll see you then bye guys